Welcome to the Cisco CyberOps Associate Essentials webinar series, where we will unpack what you need to know to get ready for the CyberOps Associate certification exam. Today is episode one, where we'll give you an overview of the certification, and then we'll do a deep dive into the security concepts knowledge domain. You can go ahead and start submitting your questions now through chat. We'll answer as many as we can along the way, and any unanswered questions we will transcribe and post later on with the on-demand video. My name is Joanna Gardner, and I am a product marketing manager here at Cisco. Joining me on the panel today are my brilliant colleagues, David Major, Anna Rubin, and Cindy Green Ortiz. David is the manager of the product marketing team in the DevCX organization. He began his career with Cisco over 20 years ago. During this time, he has successfully executed and collaborated on over 30 launches, including CCNA, the Cisco Learning Network, and the recently launched Cisco Digital Learning subscription-based offer. Anna is our Manager of Exam Development, which means she manages the entire exam team. When it comes to exams, Anna makes them happen. And Cindy is a Senior Security Architect. She advises and assists premier customers and work groups worldwide with advanced security practices to preserve and protect critical infrastructure and business resources from the latest cyber threats and attacks. There are no better people on the planet to give you behind the scenes tips and tricks for the cyber ops exam than David, Anna, and Cindy. So let's get started. Please join me in extending a warm virtual welcome to Anna Rubin. Anna? Thank you, Joanna, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Wherever you are on your certification journey, if you're just curious about what Cisco is doing, or if you're interested in pursuing this certification or any of our other certifications, today we're gonna deep dive into information that's gonna be very, very valuable for you. This is a three-part series, so we hope you'll join us in all three parts as we go deeper and deeper into each of the aspects of this new associate certification. What you're seeing here is our new certification portfolio. We launched this in February this year, and it looks very different from the certification portfolio that we had in years past that many of you may have participated in. We've kept the very best things about our certification. We offer levels of certification that run from associate to professional and on up to expert. So that's not changed and that will continue. That's what gives us a distinction in the marketplace and the brand that many of you have begun to depend on to quantify and qualify your skill set. But along with the new CCNA, CCMP, and CCIE, we've introduced two more tracks. One for software developers. It's called our DevNet track. It has an associate and soon to be expert level as well. And then we've also introduced a third track. And that's for cyber ops, because we recognize that cyber ops and securing your networks and preventing cyber attacks is a growing field. And it is a profession in and of itself that will continue to grow in the years to come. So we've introduced a new cyber ops associate. We will be launching a cyber ops professional in November and soon to be building a cyber ops expert. Next slide. These are how we distinguish our three different programs, from our engineering and network engineering at the CCNA level, to software developers at the DevNet, and also to um, cybersecurity professionals at the Cyber Associates. I'm going to jump over to David because I know he's going to dive a little bit deeper into this slide. David. David, I think you may be muted. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes, we can. Go right ahead. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry about that. Thank you so much. So thank you, Anna, and I appreciate everybody uh, providing me the opportunity to be on this webinar. I had some kind of crazy connection issues, so I just want to get started and jump right in. So 
Where we are is Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate is a completely updated certification, and it is aligned, one second. It is aligned to follow the format that's used both by CCNA and by DevNet Associate certifications. It features one exam, the 200-201 CB Ops exam, and one course, Understanding Cisco Cybersecurity Operations Fundamentals. Now, the Understanding Cisco Cybersecurity Fundamentals course is just one of several ways you can prepare to take the 200-201 CB Ops exam. And we'll cover a little, a few of those different areas and options in just a few minutes. Now, at the 20,000 foot level, the Cyber Ops Associate Certification and Training Program focuses on five key knowledge domains. And those are security concepts, security monitoring, host-based analysis, network intrusion analysis, and security policies and procedures. Now, as we mentioned before, Cisco Cyber Ops Associate is redesigned certification, and it was previously known as CCNA Cyber Ops. So even though Cyber Ops Associate is only a single exam, we've added a lot of new topics, including access control models for digital assets, malware, malware analysis and interpretation, identifying protected data and understanding key security operations center or SOC metrics, to expedite detection and containment of breaches. Next slide, please. Now, unlike its predecessor, CCNA Cyber Ops, which was kind of a standalone associate level certification, we now have an entire Cyber Ops certification track with 100% focus on all things Cyber Ops. If you attended either DevNet Day or Cisco Live virtual events over the summer, then you, know, you may know that we expanded our cyber ops cert track to include a specialist, professional, and eventually expert level certification. Now, the cyber ops specialist and professional level tracks are scheduled to roll out in November, and you can find out more information about them on Cisco.com or on Cisco Learning Network. Cisco Certified Ops Expert is still a ways out, so I won't go too far into that, but you should be able to find the blueprints for the two uh, Cyber Ops Professional Tracks now. Uh, next slide, please. So I'm not gonna do too much of a deep dive here because we wanna focus on all things Cyber Ops Associate today, but to give you a better idea about the Cyber Ops Certification Track, you'll see here that it follows the same model that we use for DevNet and CCNA, which is a single exam for the associate certification. As we move up to the professional level, you'll take two exams, one core and one concentration exam. And at the cyber ops level, that's the only thing I think that's gonna be available when we roll out the, the launch of it in November. Stay tuned, there might be another offer. I know they have some other concentrations they're looking at, but I think for now in November, we'll have one concentration and the core exam. And finally, for CCIE certification, you'll need to complete two exams, a core exam, which is the same exam you take to pass the professional certification, plus a lab exam. I mentioned those again only briefly because they're pretty much future offerings and we'll keep you posted as soon as they come out. But the good news to cover here is that we're offering an entire certification track in cyber ops. So if this is the direction you wanna go with your career in cybersecurity, we have you covered. Next slide, please. So just a quick recap on the Cisco Certifications Program, and most importantly for this webinar, Cisco Certified Cyber Ops. There are three associate level certifications, CCNA, DevNet, and Cyber Ops Associate, DevNet being DevNet Associate. Now, Cisco has in some instances introduced new certifications like DevNet Certification Track and redesigned other certifications like CCNA and Cyber Ops to give you the knowledge and skills that you need to manage and maintain today's network, as well as the technologies in the future of the network. But the focus here key today with cybersecurity operations is threat management, security orchestration and automation response or SOAR, and security incident event management, SEIM. Next slide, please. So just a quick recap, some key takeaways about Cisco Certified Cyber Ops Associate. You pass one exam and you're certified. 
The course is available in e-learning and instructor-led formats. Right now, there's probably not a lot of places that you can take it in an instructor-led format, but the good news is we offer it as a virtual instructor-led offering. So again, e-learning, we have you covered, and virtual instructor-led, we have you covered. And as soon as there's instructor-led training available, I'm sure we'll have you there too. Cisco Certified CyberOps Associate validates your skills with the fundamentals of CyberOps technologies. And it's the first of its kind Cisco certification for Cyber Operations Center or SOC analyst roles. And again, it's built for today's associate level job roles in cybersecurity operations. I'm gonna stop for a second and ask Joanna if there's any questions. Thanks, David. We have some just coming in, but I think what I'd like to do is keep going for now and save okay. some of these questions for a little bit later. Thanks. Cool, okay. Now, you're probably asking yourself, what can I do to prepare to take the CyberOps Associate exam? And that is an awesome question. The good news is, is that October is Cybersecurity Awareness Month and Cisco has you covered. So kicking off on October 5th, 2020, Cisco is pleased to present CyberOps Prep. Now, CyberOps Prep is designed to help you prepare for the 200-201 CBROPS exam. And it covers access to exclusive resources, including webinars and tools. You'll engage with a like-minded community of learners, so you'll be with others learning along the way. And then you'll go through the exam topics with Cisco subject matter experts. And you can sign up for CyberOps Prep at www.cisco.com slash go slash CyberOps Prep. Now here's the best part about CyberOps Prep. It's completely free. There's really, you have nothing to lose. So if you don't have ability to write down this URL or if you don't have a pen, um, we'll go through it again. We'll add it to the chat window. But again, it's www.cisco.com slash go slash cyber ops prep. Next slide, please. Now, in addition to the cyber ops prep program, we have several ways to prepare you for the cyber ops certification, as well as stay informed about all things cybersecurity. First up is the cyber ops associate training bundle. Now this includes the CB ROPS course that we mentioned earlier in the webinar in an e-learning format, and it includes a 200-201 exam voucher. When you purchase these two together, you'll save 15%. And the URL on the screen right here is where you'll need to go. Now, I know that's a little bit of a, a mucky muck when it comes to uh, something that you wanna scribble and write down, but, uh, but we'll, we'll make sure that you have that at some point. We'll either put it in one of the chat rooms or we'll have it for you after the webinar. As I mentioned before, we have the CyberOps prep program. And again, you'll receive free content and access to Cisco experts throughout the, the prep session. And that's at www.cisco.com slash go slash cyber ops prep. And again, that's completely free. So it's really a great deal. Again, I mentioned before, October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. And we're gonna have a Cisco chat on it on October 15th. So you can join that at cisco.com or at learning at Cisco Twitter. I'm sure they have that on Cisco Learning Network as well. And that's taking place again on October 15th. And last but not least for ways that you can prepare for your CV ROPS exam. I mentioned before that we have instructor-led training and in virtual instructor-led training. And that's offered both through our Cisco Learning Partners as well as through Cisco. And you can find more of that information at www.cisco.com slash go slash V-I-L-T. Next slide, please. Now, when you are ready to take your exam, Cisco now offers you that ability to take your exam from home. You don't have to go into an office uh, or actually a Pearson View testing center. We've set it up with Pearson View so you can take it at home. It's online and it's completely proctored. The other thing that's really nice about this program is you can get an exam voucher and you can get that exam voucher a year in advance. And whenever you purchase that exam voucher, you have a full year before you actually have to take the exam. And now this is a great way to save time and money. And the best part is you don't have to drive uh, into a Pearson View testing center. You can do all of that at the convenience of your own home. And in times like this, 
that's a really important thing. And the URL is www.cisco.com slash go slash online testing. Or you can go directly to Pearson View at www.pearsonview.com. Next slide, please. So the last piece I want to cover, and I think this is a pretty cool thing too, before I pass it over to my colleague, Anna Rubin, who's going to tell you more about uh, the certification program, I want to cover with you recertification options. So Cisco now offers continuing education and continuing education credits. So now continuing education credits used to be only available to our CCIE certified individuals, but now it's available across the board. You can use continuing education credits at CCNA, specialist, CCNP, or CCIE level. And this is a great way, I mean, you have to be certified, but it's a great way to recertify your certification as long as you do this within three years of completing the, the program. So you have three years to complete it, and you can use these different ways to do it. You can attend the Cisco live training session, you can author content, you can complete online training courses, or you can do a combination of both. So there's different ways that you can earn it. The URL at the bottom is a little bit tricky. I, I don't know that you'll be able to scribble that down quickly, but again, as I mentioned before, with all of the URLs, we're gonna go ahead and, and have those for you at the end of the webinar or throughout in the chat windows. So if you have any questions about recertification options or continuing education, we have you covered as well. And I think that is it for me. Joanna, are there any additional questions at this time? I, I think, again, I think we'll just keep going forward, but thank you for that terrific overview of the certification. I'm, I'm excited. I want to go get a certification myself now. But instead, we will hand over to Anna, who will pick us up and take us on. Anna. Thank you, Joanna, and thank you, David. And Joanna, you can go get your certification, because today we're going to talk about how to get prepared. Every one of you on this call today are at some point in your career, in your learning path, and we want you to know when this call ends today, one thing, that this is an attainable certification, this is a valuable certification, and we're here to help you along the way. So how do you get ready? Jump into the next slide. The very first thing to know about this certification and all of Cisco's certifications is that there are no surprises, there should be no tricks we're not out to, to get you to a test center and then all of a sudden shock you with what you see. Every one of our exams, every one of our programs is founded on, based upon a blueprint, okay? And that is simply a document that you can download for every exam and, and knows exactly what is covered on that exam. And it also shows you, your colleagues, or your employers what the certification you've earned represents. What you're seeing here is the blueprint for the CyberOps Associate. This is just the beginning of it. You'll see at the top, security concepts. That's the first domain and the one we're going to dive a little bit deeper into today. But this is a four-page blueprint, and as you go through it, you'll see a list of every domain that's there. There's a weight to the left of it that says this is how important this, this domain is. It weighs 20%. So 20% of the exam is going to come from this domain, okay? Underneath each of the domain topics are a list of tasks. You'll see here, describe the CIA triad, compare security deployment. Each of these tasks begins with a verb. This is really important because it lets you know exactly what is expected of you on the exam, okay? So if you see something that says describe, that's a basic understanding of that concept. That's understanding its purpose, its functionality, what it is, what it does, how it works. It's not too deep. You don't actually, at this point, have to know anything other than the basic understanding of, of its functionality and its purpose. As you move to the next level where you'll see tasks that say apply or interpret, that's when you actually need to be able to do it. You need to be able to take those concepts that you've learned and put them into practice. So when you're looking at a blueprint, the very first thing you do is you just glance down it and read those tasks. 
and you ask yourself, can I perform that task? Do I have the knowledge and skills necessary to do that? And if you do, you're ready for the exam. It really is that simple. I don't want to overcomplicate it because it can be a very intimidating process. So as you look down and you say, oh, I understand the CIA triad, great, move to the next one. There are going to be certain tasks where you realize, oh, I need to learn a little bit more about that one. Circle it, highlight it, start doing some self-study on that. Look and see what training's out there or as you're doing a formal training course, recognize that you may need to spend a little bit more time there. All right, jump to the next slide because I wanna show you how these tasks, these verbs in front of these tasks really build on each other. Okay, it's a very basic down here at the bottom. You see the word describe, okay? That is the foundation of all learning, to understand tasks, to understand their meaning, to understand the concepts, their function, their purpose, that's where we all start out with any topic that we're learning. And then you move up in the complexity that's required mentally to perform tasks at a higher level, you have to start putting things together. And so we use the word, it's a higher level of cognitive complexity. That's a big word. You can put that in your, in your uh, write that down because you'll, you'll enjoy, that's some great dinner conversation, let's say. Anyway, the next level of complexity is that apply level, configure, implement, apply something. So you're moving up. You need to take those concepts and you need to be able to put them together and do something with them. Then you go up to where you might have to troubleshoot, to evaluate, to analyze something. And that has to do with now you have to not only know how to do it, but you need to know how the parts fit together so that you can look at something and determine if it's working properly. If something's broken, how does it need to be fixed? So that's a little higher level. And then you get higher up to design, where you now have to take all that you've learned, all the parts that fit together, and create something new. So this is how knowledge is gained anywhere. But this is how knowledge is demonstrated on our blueprint as well. So if you look at a task and it says troubleshoot, you immediately know, I'm going to need to know a little bit more about that topic. If you see something that says describe, you don't have to go that deep into that topic. So this is really, really key to how you're studying, how you're self-assessing your knowledge and determining whether you're ready to move on to the exam. Next slide, please. So once you know what the blueprint looks like and on this website, our learning network, you can download the blueprint. Okay, this is our um, Cyber Associate page. You can get to it with the link below. And on it, you'll see at the very top different options that you have the exam itself, discussions, webinars and videos, additional resources, all of this is free. You can go through here and find a lot of helpful information. If you wanna deep dive on a specific topic, if you wanna look and see if there's been a webinar on a specific topic that you wanna learn more about. Um, if you wanna find out what the study materials are, whether it's a paid course that might be available or whether it's free information, there are plenty of people within Cisco that are putting out webinars, putting out little study groups on different topics that you can join. This is also on the left-hand side, you'll see exam topics. This is where you'll download the blueprint. So go here and start digging around and see what you find um, that's really gonna help you on your certification journey. Next slide, please. Oh, here's one of the links when you tr push training videos or webinars you'll see that there are webinars that are available for free. This webinar itself will also become available on this link for people to understand an overview. But we'll be adding new things to this page all the time as we move forward, especially into next month when we're looking at um, cybersecurity awareness. Next, video, uh, next slide, please. Tutorials, again, same thing at the Start Learning Network, you're going to be able to look at exam tutorials and click and see what's available and walk through some PowerPoint. Next slide. And this is the course that David was sharing um, with you about. This is a, a full course that covers the full blueprint. There's um, e-learning that you can take as self-paced or you could participate in a class. Um, there aren't as many um, in-person classes going on right now because of the climate, but you can certainly do a self-paced class or 
You can get involved in a study group that might be linked to one of the courses. Next, next slide. Now we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the first topic of the blueprint because we want to give you a little bit of a, of a, a little lesson here today to show you what's involved and, and how you can begin to study. But I also want to say that this is the perfect opportunity to be joining the cybersecurity space. Um, it is a growing space. And truthfully, the job opportunities outpace the number of qualified candidates available today. So it's, a, it's, it's ripe for the picking. It's a new profession. It's an expanding profession. And our research and studies show us that by 2021, we're expecting to see 3.5 million cybersecurity job openings. So if you're looking to upskill, if you're looking to change careers, if you're looking to become more valuable in your current career, we encourage you to choose cybersecurity because it, it's the hot topic right now. Next slide. So what is this exam? This is a 120 minute exam. Oh, jump to the next slide, please. 120 minutes, covers all the domains in the blueprint. You can take it at a test center or you can take it in your home or office using our remote proctor option. And it covers these five tasks, these five domains, security concepts, which my um, colleague Cindy is gonna discuss today, security monitoring and host space analysis, which we will target next week a little deeper, and then network intrusion analysis, and security policies and procedures the third week. We'll dive a little bit deeper there. So I'm going to hand it over to Cindy. Cindy's um, on the ground dealing with this every day for Cisco and helping our clients secure and prepare to be able to defend against any type of cyber attacks. So she's great to have with us because she's got a lot of firsthand experience on how this works every day. So Cindy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, this is a great certification. I can't say enough about it uh, from a perspective that I work with clients every day. They are working on these problems that are part of the exam every day. Uh, the team of us that worked on the exam, uh, when we did it, we did uh, the questions based on a real world experience. And I think that's really important to note that we're not um, trying to throw those curveballs at you. Uh, we are trying to make it so you will understand what it is to be a cyber ops profession, professional in the field. Also, if you're already in the field, then you're going to recognize the questions that you're being asked and uh, be able to get that certification that you've been uh, needing for your career progression. One of the key things I'll say is, um, you know, the cyber ops uh, program, it focuses on operational skills and knowledge. And it makes SOC uh, analysts or security operations analysts able to um, do their job better on the front lines. Uh, it also enables you to be able to say to your employers or potential employers uh, that you have validated your skills uh, and Cisco is given a great opportunity to be able to do this, especially with all the different uh, free ways of getting access to the certification. Uh, so I would say the benefits for this is to launch your career if you haven't already done so. Uh, it's also to master your um, the levels to protect your your business or your organization uh, fully. And you know the, the key part is sometimes is just having that real world, world knowledge and being able to transfer it into a certification. Sometimes that that can be difficult, and I think this is a great entry point for you to do that. So let's talk about some of the concepts that are here in the security concepts domain. Uh, talking about the CIA triad, let's, uh, let's do a deep dive today. Let's be prepared. Here are the things that we can do to prepare. Um, talking about CIA, it's, it's truly your foundation. Uh, talking about confidentiality, integrity, and availability. You have to know that. You have to know it's solid. You have to have it so you understand it. And it's part of your day-to-day -day in, in a security role, but on top of it for the certification, you certainly need to know all the ins and outs, what, what the boundaries are, what 
confidentiality uh, refers to is protecting information from being ac accessed from uh, unauthorized parties, so protecting it. And so we should only make it so data is accessed by those who are authorized to receive it. It should never be, uh, data should never be accessible for, for folks that uh, clearly have no need. Uh, so it's that need to know, and, and I'm always uh, talking about zero trust in this, this, this angle. You, know, you should only have access to what you need to have access to. So things like your bank records, things like um, your employee records or your health records, those things should be kept close and they should be protected and you would want you know, your bank to keep uh, close all your financial information. Uh, you wouldn't want that just available to anyone. So that's the kind of concept uh, that confidentiality comes in play. Uh, the other, the I, uh, integrity, you know, once the data is there, you want to make sure that the amount of money you have in the bank is what the bank says you have. Uh, you you want to make sure that there's a way to certify that that data is correct and that it hasn't been altered by a malicious actor. Um, so maintaining integrity is a critical job of a cyber ops professional uh, for any employer that they work for. Availability uh, is an, a critical uh, piece of the CIA. Um, Availability is very important from a perspective of if you don't have access or don't have a way to get to systems, then most likely you um, the systems are just not going to be productive for the, the employer. But the other part is if authorized users can't get to the information when they need to get to it, then a malicious actor has been successful potentially in making it so there's a loss of, of um, business, possibly loss of reputation for your business, and it's in a form of a denial of service attack. So those are kind of examples of things that you need to know well for the, the exam, go in depth, and, and get into the information. Another thing would be to compare security deployments. Um, that would be talking about how you de deploy uh, some kind of um, security event monitoring system or how you go about looking at information, how do you get visibility for information in the environment so that you can actually prevent threats and, and attacks. Um, then understanding security terms very well, things like um, threat, vulnerability, exploit, um, those kinds of things. You're going to have to know those well and then be able to address them in the, in the test. And we'll get into that uh, in a, another slide here in a minute. But um, I wanted to make sure that you, you understand that you will have to delve deep into what those are. Another uh, area that I'll focus on as well is defense in depth strategy. And what do we mean by that? Now, I'm, I'm sure we've heard, some, some folks have heard about the castle moat and you know the, the castle wall uh, concept. So, uh, but these days, where your data can be anywhere and it's located in the cloud, we have to have those defenses at all areas that protect the data. So that defense and depth strategy has certainly been um, modified and has to be looked at differently. When I work with my customers on a regular basis, that defense and depth is always on my mind because whenever there is an issue or problem, it's because they didn't have enough either visibility to what's going on or they didn't have enough protections around what was being um, taken or um, breached. So that's very important. We would like to also talk about comparing access control models, things like being able to look at how you have two-factor authentication, how those controls are put in place, um, what kind of user it is, uh, whether it be a third party, uh, whether it be an employee, or a guest, like a customer. Then we would also want to know in depth the CVSS score. Um, that's really an interesting concept. So it's talking about con a common vulnerability scoring system. And this is what happens is whenever we are trying to measure how something is uh,
um, as far as the challenges or, or the potential loss, we use these CVSS scores to define um, how severe something is and how, how much the industry should react to these kinds of uh, vulnerabilities. And so you'll see that whenever um, there's been an alert published um, as to whether or not something is important or not. So that is critical for um, organizations to be able to respond to events and to prioritize what needs to be addressed and when. Okay, let's go on to the next slide, please. So let's take that, um, we talked about um, the different concepts. I wanted to go further into risk. So let's talk about um, what risk is. It's the probability of exposure or loss, right? So it's really important um, to understand <clears throat> when you have a high probability of exposure or a data loss, then you put your, your um, business at risk. And that risk rating is um, certainly part of the scores that are, uh, you know, different organizations might score your business, uh, either, even a um, regulator or some kind of outward um, group that's evaluating your environment. So an idea of that would be is potentially they scan you and they realize you have a lot of weak passwords. So that would be a risk, and that would be something that they would want you to address. And that's, uh, it also has a, a, a threat of stolen, having those uh, credentials stolen since they are so weak, it would be easy for them to be leveraged. So looking at the threat, what is a threat and understanding that well is, you know, a threat is a malicious act that seeks uh, to damage your data, steal your data, or disrupt the digital life of, a, of an organization. So, in a, even yourself, right? So, if you have that in your own environment, you want to make sure you don't have all the same passwords, right? Uh, those kinds of concepts. But in an organization, having strong policies and making sure that those uh, policies are adhered to and are, are monitored is very critical. A vulnerability is a weakness that can be easily exploited. You, or maybe even not easily, but certainly it's there and it's available. It, understanding what needs to be done to address that. And that's where that CVSS uh, comes into play, where you have to understand how important it is to get things in, addressed in your environment. So um, if you find that um, someone's uh, application hasn't been patched, that would put you uh, at a higher score in your environment. That, that particular uh, area would have to be modified, updated, or patched. And then exploit, uh, in, in using our password uh, situation, would be potentially a dictionary attack on these weak passwords. Let's say they were all words that would be easily found in a dictionary then that would be easy for someone to leverage that. So, um, you know, it's a, a ball, an exploit is a bug or a vulnerability that can cause an intended or an, an, an ex, uh, expected behavior to occur in your applications. And so it can lead you to different situations. So let's see what we learned. So let's look at the drag and drop here between um, how the, the test actually enables you to drag and drop these concepts. So uh, looking at your threats, your reduced uh, risk reduction, vulnerability, or exploit, and, and we've talked about policy, uh, password enforcement, weak passwords, and if a user account has been accessed or company files are stolen. So we need to, to pull these over to the right um, answer which one is a threat, which one is a risk, which one is a vulnerability, and which one is an exploit. Go on to the next slide. And this is our answer. Uh, so understanding that the test would have this kind of information is something that you need to um, be able to complete. And, and do this process. So understanding the concepts, understanding the definitions, and then being able to practically apply them on the exam. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna talk about another real world defense in depth uh, strategy. <clears throat> 
So, but as recently as last week. So a uh, business realizes they've had an attack. And you know how they realized it? They got a phone call. And it's never fun getting a phone call from the FBI. It's, it, it's happened to me. Uh, I know what it's like having an organization when the FBI calls you. You say, oh, okay, well, time to, to do something about it. In their case, it was expansive and, and across the entire footprint. I was lucky it was just one server. So, um, but in this situation, uh, they had a situation where ransomware had taken over their environment, had been there for some time, and then it had been executed by the attacker. And what that means is uh, they are being held hostage and they have to decide what they're going to do. Uh, sometimes uh, they get advice from law enforcement, sometimes they get advice from their insurance carriers that they work with for cyber insurance. But in, in many cases, I'm sorry, if you could go back, thanks. Um, in many cases, it's important that we understand that um, the, the, the customer in that situation has a lot of needs. And this is where the cyber ops person needs to have a good understanding of what's going on and be able to react. In their environment, having visibility and having an understanding of what ransomware looks like or what attacks look like, what exploits could be leveraged against them, and understanding where they might be uh, as far as vulnerabilities is critical in their organization. So having an understanding of where you have critical issues in your environment is very important. And so in the exam, There'll be many things that uh, you'll need to understand as far as what a frontline person would have to respond to. And this would be you come into work one day and then uh, you have those screens up that say, you know, send us your money, or things are just starting to act weird. And that's where you start looking and leveraging your tool sets. So that's what's part of the exam. We can go on to the next one. So in the case of my example with a customer that I'm dealing with, um, think first and execute. Sometimes I have customers who start executing and don't think. And that's, that's a situation because you're in a panic and the situation is uh, out of hand and you've got law enforcement on the phone. Uh, the first thing you do is go try to execute on something that's not complete. So thinking first is very important. Also having an emergency response plan is critical and enacting that emergency response plan in a timely fashion is critical. Then working through um, your containment processes, understanding what you have in your environment that, that will enable you to contain whatever the problem is and maybe to start identifying what that problem is. Uh, really important to understand that some organizations didn't prioritize that when their event occurred and all of a sudden you're coming in behind them trying to address the issue. And um, that's always unfortunate, but we are always there to help. And so this is the situation a cyber ops professional might find themselves in where they don't have much that they can do except pick up the phone. So there are a number of things that um, need to be thought through and it should be part of the emergency plan. And then turn on defense in depth tools. Those, those should have been turned on before the event, obviously, but if you don't have them on, you need to get them on. And that means visibility, um, things that can do enforcement in the environment and put controls in place so that you can actually start, um, you know, stop the bleeding in the environment truly. And at that point, once you've gotten to where you have full containment and you have enforcement going, then you can begin with your recovery. Some of these things will happen in parallel, but this strategy is throughout the cyber ops exam. Next slide. So let's talk about this principle of defense in depth. Using tools to recover infected devices, would that be your first step? Using multiple layers of protection with alerting, would that be your first step? Or using firewalls to alert and secure the network, would that be your first step? Or using security policies to maintain strong passwords, 
Well, if you're in the middle of an event, most likely that's kind of like closing the door after the, the place is on fire, right? So uh, the security policy um, needs to be dealt with, but it's not the first thing that you would do. So using firewalls to alert and secure the network, maybe. Using multiple layers protections with alerting, more likely and using tools to recover infected devices. I'm sure there's a parallel track, but it wouldn't be the first thing you do. So let's look at what the response is here. Next slide, or build. Of course, the option two would be the way you would go about this, using multiple layers of protection with alerting. So this is an example of some of the questions that might be on the exam. They might be more detailed and a bigger scenario involved. Next slide, please. So talking about identifying the challenges of data visibility and detection. So we, with my example of someone who's just got that phone call from a government, uh, government entity, um, what would you do? What would you use? Um, looking at your cloud tools, trusting third parties but don't have lack of visibility, and having your tools inside to protect. So some situations what happens is um, they use a cloud vendor in, and they use cloud native tools to protect their data. And then you have situations that are in the news that are costing some of our customers uh, large amounts of money because they didn't have their own security tools deployed in the cloud. That would be an example of not having the data visibility that you need. Trusting third parties but not having uh, visibility, that would be portion of where you have this third party, they are using security tools, but you can't see what they're protecting. And if they have a breach themselves internally in their environment, then they run into a problem. And then your, their problem is now your problem. And in this case, uh, that's in the news currently, is I think they're getting uh, bills of $80 million in, in fines, so uh, that's an example, and those fines will just keep going because that was just the first entity to prosecute. Um, another would be, um, you know, making sure that you have your tools inside to protect. So having it so inside your environment, you have tool sets deployed, uh, visibility tools, protection tools, and enforcement tools, and you have that full end-to-end -end picture throughout the environment. Next slide, please. So I would like to thank you for your time, and I'll open this over, send it over to Joanna for uh, questions. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you for sharing all that knowledge and for sharing a glimpse into uh, a day in the life of a security professional. It sounds exciting and fascinating. <laughs> Um, so we, we're going to begin our, our question and answer period right now. And I think this first question I would like to send to Anna. Um, and the question from this viewer is, is it necessary to get the CCNA before getting the CyberOps Associate Certification? And I wonder if maybe we could talk about prerequisites in general in the whole program sure. as we answer this. No, and that's a great question, Joanna. You know, in, in our portfolio, Prior to February, we did have prerequisites. So as you were moving from one level to the next, if you wanted to get your CCMP, then there was a prerequisite that you had to have already received your CCNA in that same technology. That is one thing that we eliminated in this new portfolio. And many of us we heard from customers, probably like the person who asked this question, that we that customers wanted to make that decision themselves as to what level they were ready to enter into. And some people were already at the professional level and didn't want to have to go all the way back and start at the associate level. Another thing was that we noticed that people were branching in their careers at later dates. So they might start out in one technology, but then when they got to the professional level, they took, wanted to choose another technology to really dive deeper and focus on. And that was causing confusion and a lot of hardship to have to go back and get your CCNA. So we eliminated those prerequisites. Right now, starting in February, there are no prerequisites for any of our certifications. 
You can start wherever you feel comfortable and you feel prepared. So if you want to jump in and get your CCNA or jump in and get your DevNet associate or start with your CyberOps associate, you can choose that and then carry on into the professional level wherever you choose. Thank you, Anna. So this next question, I think I would like each of you to give an answer. The question is, um, let me make sure I'm, I'm finding the right one. Yeah, so, so this viewer says, I don't have any cybersecurity knowledge as in zero whatsoever, but I want to enter this profession. Can you provide me a right pathway to this certification? And we know that there are many pathways, right? Everybody takes their own yeah. path to their certification. So maybe if each of you could um, could offer just one possibility. And so we'll have three possibilities out there. And I think maybe let's start with David and then go to Anna and then Cindy. So David, let's. what would be one way that somebody could learn what they need to know and then pass the exam? We can't hear you. Yeah, are you on mute? Bill can't oh, hear you. We oh, can start. With I'll I can jump go in, ahead. Joanna. Go ahead. Um, okay. <laughs> if I was going to be earning my um, jumping into my cyber associate and I had no experience whatsoever, I would download the blueprint and I would familiar my, myself with that topic. Then I would, um, at that point, probably sign up for one of the more um, extensive training courses. So Cisco has one, I know there are other courses out there, but I think that would give you um, the in-depth information that you're going to need about all of these since you're not familiar with any of these topics. And then the topics that you needed a little bit of a deeper dive on, I would go to our website and try to find some stealth study and look around to see what else you could find. Wonderful. So I followed by self study as needed. Cindy, and what would you do? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's a great place to start. Um, being, I'm in the field. Uh, I know many people uh, start in IT and then move over to security. But um, now that um, things have moved along in the timeline, if you will, people do enter straight into cybersecurity, and they do that generally by becoming a, a uh, SOC analyst or a security operations center analyst. They might start at entry level. Um, another way, though, I always like to say is that to get a mentor, that somebody who's actually in the field and um, establish a relationship with them and work on pathways that fit you best because everybody has different uh, knowledge and also aptitudes, and those aptitudes really matter. Um, if your aptitude is such that you like to solve a mystery and you like to pick through things and, you know, find the clues and go from one place to another, then it's definitely cyber ops is for you. Uh, if, however, you like to write code and you like to automate things, it can still be in cyber ops, but you're more likely on a different path with um, maybe like a DevNet side of things. So that's just my take. Very awesome, awesome. So being a mentor, which you do through communities or social media or what have you, and then pay attention to your own aptitudes. And I think we'll come back to that. I think that's a really interesting question. We'll come back to that in a little bit. David, is there anything that you'd like to add? Still not hearing you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Well, maybe we'll add David's comments in in the comments that we post after. So let's go on for now. Um, and let's, as long as we're we're on the subject of aptitude, um, we have a question from a viewer who says that they are a caregiver, and are looking to advance their career by going into IT. Do you think cybersecurity is a good choice for someone like this with no IT experience? So this this sort of gets into not only aptitude, but you know, kind of like personality traits. Like what kind of what kind of personality traits would predispose you to to succeed in cybersecurity? And Cindy, let's start with you on this one and then we'll go to Anna. 
Yes. I, I think, um, you know, the aptitude is cer certainly critical. I think also that, um, that questioning mind. And then also someone who is willing to change constantly. Uh, that's the thing. The role requires a constant uh, change, uh, constantly learning. Every single day there's something new to learn and something new to consume. And if you're one of those people who just want to learn something and be done with it, it might not be the field for you. Uh, because every single day you have to absorb more information, take on and possibly change of direction of what you normally would do and do it in something a different way. Invent a new mousetrap, if you will, every single day. I couldn't agree more with Cindy. I think that fast-paced, ever-changing approach is something that is going to be critical in this, in this career, in this field. You know, at multitasking, being able to to be ready for what's coming next and almost be looking out for what's coming next is really going to be a strong skill set that's needed. Um, it doesn't mean that that's better than other skill sets. It's just that that's what it's going to require in this field, especially as a SOC analyst, which is where this associate certification is really pointing you um, at that entry level. You really are going to have to be a, have strong observation skills, the ability to, to pivot quickly the ability to learn new skills, the ability to continue training and always looking for, for what's new, what's out there. Um, and as exciting as that is, some people feel like that's overwhelming. So a lot of it would just be gauging your skill set and your interests. Wonderful, thank you. So I heard um, a kind of a, a comfort with change, uh, being able to question liking to learn, enjoying learning, observation skills, and being able to pivot quickly. Lots of, kind of lots of, it's a high energy field. Is that, is that what you would say? Absolutely, every single day. And also being able to talk and work with different kinds of people. Uh, all day long, you are constantly negotiating different personality types. Uh, it's really important because uh, people call you and they're very stressed out or the other way around. They're not giving you the information. They're guarding it. Uh, so being able to get people to tell you, I, I, I call it giving them, a, getting them to confess what's wrong, uh, you know, and what happened. Because you know something did, and just working your way through it is really critical. Uh, so having that, that ability to get people to trust you and work with them. And uh, I think that's, that's a critical skill. Terrific, thank you. And I think I see that David's audio is back. Is that right, I David? think I'm good. Can you All hear right, me now? I hear you, All yay. Right. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, so since you're back you. on, no worries, <laughs> no worries. Um, so we'll, let's go back to um, a question sort of back around the recertification issue that you were talking about a little bit earlier. Yeah. We have a viewer who's wondering if this, if earning this new cert will renew their CCNA. Um, so, so you can go ahead and answer that, and then, and you know, if there's anything else you want to add about recertification as well. So, I think at the associate level, it. Oh gosh, that's a good question. Um, I think at the associate level, it will renew the certification that you're taking. I don't think it would straight across renew CCNA. If, if they're saying that would it renew the CCNA along with getting the new certification, I don't think that it will do that. I, I think you have to take the certification that you're interested in taking in order for it to recertify. So it, I guess the question is, can they recertify CCNA by taking Cisco certified cyber ops? And I don't think that's the case. I think they have to take the one that they're interested in recertifying. Did that answer the question? Sounds good. I believe so. I believe so. And so it would be the 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 exam of the exam you want to recertify would recertify. So taking one of the professional level exams would recertify the associate. That's correct. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Great. And um, let me jump in there too, David. Please. Um, with yep. our new um, cyber security associate as well as our DevNet associate and the new single CCNA, you can pass any one associate exam. 
So any one of those three, and that will recertify your other associate exam. Oh, okay. Or, ah. So that, that is the case. You can also pass any one of the professional concentration exams. So as you move to the professional level at CCMP or cyber ops professional or DevNet professional, you can pass one of those concentration exams or one of the technology cores that will also recertify your associate level um, exam, whether it's the CCNA, the DevNet associate, or the cyber ops associate. And there's one other option. You can earn 30 continuing education credits. Yeah. Those continuing education credits, as David was mentioning earlier, could be a course, could be um, an event, a combination of those. So those are all the ways that you can recertify your associate level. And once you recertify one, that recertification carries through to all of your associate level certifications. Terrific. I love it. Awesome. Thank you for that, Anna. Thanks. So this next question, um, I think let's take this right straight to Cindy. So one of our viewers is wondering how much experience you have to have to become a SOC analyst. And this kind of goes to what you were saying earlier about entering as an entry level analyst and finding a mentor. Um, so maybe could you speak to that question and, and kind of unpack for us what it's like to get a job? Exactly. Yes, uh, that's a critical skill, right, to understand how you get in. Uh, so it depends on your age group. Let's start there. If you are coming out of college or you're in college, uh, that's a great opportunity for you to, to intern. Uh, so looking for internships would be a great way of starting. Um, you could also potentially, while going to school, volunteer time uh, to see if they would actually let you work into the, that environment. But I would say strongly you would need a mentor to try to pursue something like that. Um, but there are a lot of companies who also offer internships for new and career. And so in that new and career role, um, you're likely to be able to, to uh, walk in and bridge that gap of knowledge that you potentially would need. Um, certainly, uh, if you can't get into security in an internship, I would intern in um, information technology and then be able to bridge over. Uh, that would be another opportunity. Uh, so don't say no to those internships if they're not quite aligned. It's a good opportunity for you to leverage it and build upon it. Um, and also to network. Use LinkedIn, but also use uh, these different groups. And uh, these days, most of those groups that uh, you can network with are online and they are having meetings and they are having things that where you can build those connections that you need to have to get into the field. Um, but definitely, uh, I would say this is a great place for you to start. Great, thank you. And and uh, kind of piling on to the idea of the networking, that's a that's I will take this opportunity to plug the Cisco Learning Network, which is a great way to connect <laughs> with others in the field. Um, let's see. So, and this question, let's take this one right to Anna. Um, this viewer is asking, how hard is it to achieve the CCNA CyberOps, well, the CyberOps associate? for a beginner who has no experience, who wants to only use Cisco's online learning material. And I'm guessing they're probably talking about the material on the Cisco Learning Network. Okay. So, so if you're gonna take the course, the organized formal course, that course is gonna follow the blueprint. So it's gonna go domain by domain, and it's gonna cover every task in that. That is a self-paced course. I would give myself a couple of weeks to go through that course in, deep, in, deep, in depth. And I mean, if that was your full-time pursuit, if you were diving in there 40 hours a week, really gonna um, focus in on this, I would give myself a couple of weeks to really master that course. I'd give myself a little bit of time to look around online and see if there were other things I needed to dive a little bit deeper in if I didn't get the, the depth of knowledge that I needed based on your own evaluation of the blueprint and your skill set, and then I would take the exam. Um, a lot of people take the exam the first time and they don't pass, but then it gives them an idea of what they're looking for the next time around. Of course, the exam's always changing as well, so you're not gonna get the same exam both times. But um, if you really feel prepared, don't don't fret and worry and hesitate. Just go straight and take the exam. And and you might, you might, be, you might surprise yourself 
that you passed. Because I think if you look at that blueprint and you feel like you know that information to perform those tasks, you should have no problem passing that exam. Um, a lot of people have to do this um, along with their day job, so to speak, or they're, they're studying as sort of part-time as they're taking care of other um, responsibilities in life. So in that situation, I'd set up a more organized plan where I would say, okay, this week or these next two weeks, I'm gonna focus on domain one. And then after that, I'm gonna to move to domain two so that you give yourself a, a strategy to get to the end. And the end is the full blueprint. And once you get there, if you um, get there in a month or two months or six months based on the availability of time that you have, once you're ready, go ahead and take that exam. Great, thank you. So this next question, I think let's begin with Cindy and then go to Anna. And then if David wants to comment, we'll, we'll end the question with him. This is an interesting question. Uh, the question is, what's the difference? Um, well, there's two parts to the question. One is, well, what's the difference between the old CCNA security and the new cyber ops associate? And also, could you comment on the difference between um, the security track, like the CCNP security track and the cyber ops? I just said a whole mouthful. Cindy, would you like me to, to repeat that or? <laughs> I think I got most of it. Okay. Um, okay. I think probably Anna would be the best one to answer that one. So I'm gonna hand that back okay. over to her. So Anna, I think you're on mute, so. Sure. Okay, so first off, the difference in the old cyber, CCNA cyber and the new cyber ops. All right, very little difference. We essentially took the two exams that were in the CCNA cyber and we brought them together into a single exam. It's a bigger exam, it's a 120 minute exam, um, about 100 questions. So it's almost the size of those two combined. We took out a little bit of the network fundamentals that were included in the first um, CCNA cyber exam recognizing that people were entering into this space not directly from the network engineer field, but maybe coming in separately and didn't um, need all of those fundamentals. So we left the, the basic network fundamentals that you would need, but um, removed a lot of that. So that's the biggest difference in those two. If you were studying for the CCNA cyber, you will have no problem transferring straight into the cyber office associate. As a matter of fact, those that had passed those two exams earned their new cyber ops associate because of the strong correlation and alignment between the two. I know a lot of people have been working with NETICAD and with um, Cisco's scholarship program to prepare themselves for the CCNA cyber. And so there's a lot of continuity between those paths so that it's a smooth transition. We simply didn't feel like it fit in the network associate um, bundle anymore because we kept seeing this becoming its own separate profession within IT. And so we wanted to give it the visibility and the place that it needed in the market to really help professionals in this field and associates in this field distinguish themselves from others that are claiming to have this expertise or talking about this expertise. We wanted to give them a way to really demonstrate their knowledge and skill set. Now, as it relates to the CCMP or the CCNA security, okay, that's going to talk about network security, the CCNA um, and the CCMP security. It's going to talk about a broader range of security, um, network security, securing the cloud, content security, endpoint protection and detection, um, network access, visibility and enforcement is going to be a part of that, but not at the same depth that it's happening at the cyber. So um, you will have some transition between the knowledge. There will be a little bit in both ends because security is important, whether you're looking at it straight from a network engineer perspective and setting up security infrastructures, or whether you're looking at it from the cyber ops, but they are distinct in, in what they cover. So look online for our blueprints for the CCNA security and the CCMP security, as well as the DevNet has a security element to it in automating security. 
So um, it, it crosses over naturally, um, but you'll be able to distinguish that by looking at our blueprints and determining which one may be a better fit for you. So blueprint, 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 right? Yes. Say, say that five times as fast. Or you, know, <laughs> you don't have to. So, okay, great. Thank you, Anna. So the next question um, is going to get a little bit more into the technical content. So let's go back to Cindy with this one. We have a viewer who would like to hear a little bit more about threats and exploits. Could you give us a little bit more? Cindy, we're not hearing you. Sorry, I was double muted. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> so let's talk about exploits for a moment. Um, talking about how, um, you know, maybe even about software programs, there are exploits that have been developed specifically for key applications that you leverage on a day to day basis. And those exploits are, uh, let's say, known or potentially well known. Um, uh, vulnerabilities, so openings or, or flaws or uh, even zero day uh, flaws that are available uh, for someone to take advantage of. So uh, hopefully that clarifies that a little bit more. Um, successfully exploiting an exploit would mean that you've uh, created potentially a data breach. So that's, that's kind of where that goes. Um, looking at uh, a threat, a threat could be a threat or a threat actor. So thinking about them, um, a threat is something that uh, is potentially uh, has an intent of harm to an asset, um, or it can be cause of one of your environments or applications to become unavailable. So. Um, those kinds of threats can be expressed that way, or it can be also, um, you know, a threat actor is just somebody who is uh, uh, maybe disgruntled or malicious or has a reason to attack an organization. So um, those threats and threat actors kind of can cross over with each other if you're looking at in detail about that. Great, thanks. And so, Cindy, while we're with you and we're, we're talking technical, um, we have a question also about asymmet asymmetric encryption versus symmetric encryption. Is one or the other better? Well, I always like um, the, the number one answer from anybody in security, and uh, you can go ahead and write this one down and use it all the time, uh, is it depends. The answer is always it depends and should. Uh, but Typically, uh, you take, take those two phrases and you can add it to most of your answers. Uh, but looking at holistically, um, asymmetric encryption would be better because there are more checks and balances and there is more um, the, these keys that are passed between the sender and the receiver of information. So that would be my view. But it still depends. <laughs> Gotcha. It depends. We can tattoo that one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so here's a question. Uh, and honestly, I'm not sure which of you would, would like to answer this one. So we'll do a little bit of a jump ball. Um, so this viewer has a CCIE security and is wondering how different cyber ops is than CCIE security. Can they work in cyber ops with the CCIE security? Anyone? It well, depends, right? <laughs> I, I can jump in on that. It one. does. All right. So as you look <laughs> at the way um, all of our certifications build on each other, so now we have a single CCNA. I, I think I might have misspoke a minute ago when I said CCNA security. We have a single CCNA um, focused on network engineers. Okay. In that CCNA, there is a domain on security fundamentals because security is important for everyone in the IT space, regardless of what they're doing, okay? You have to be aware of security. So it's things like security concepts, elements of security, access control, remote access, um, layer two security features, uh, what, some wireless security protocols. That's fundamental for everyone. But then at the network engineer track, as we move into the CCMP security, 
you're focusing deeper diving into actually security infrastructure, like I mentioned earlier. As you move up in that same network path to the CCI security, it builds on that. Okay, so that is very focused, and there is a blueprint for that as well. Okay, now everyone, no matter where you are, is going to have to worry about cybersecurity. Every company is worrying about cybersecurity, whether you're focused on data centers, service provider, enterprises, collaboration, um, all of that security is, has a strong element in that. Cybersecurity has a strong element in that. But the cyber ops track that's new and different, we are looking to certify a cyber ops professional, a cyber ops engineer, so to speak, where um, they start out at the associate level, which is what we were talking about in the blueprint today. Then we're moving to the professional level. So at that professional level, there will be two exams you have to take. The first is a core, cyber ops core. That blueprint is available as well, but that dives deeper into a large array of um, cyber operations. Then you get to choose a concentration. Right now, there's going to be one in data forensics and incident response. There'll be a concentration in threat hunting, and then there'll be a concentration in cloud security. So those three will be the concentrations right away in that professional level, and you'll choose one of those in addition to the core. Now, we are currently developing the cyber ops expert, okay, and that will be um, coming out I don't know exactly when. I'd like to say 2021, but I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. We're in the process of developing that now. So that will be at the same level as the CCIE security, yet it will focus solely on cybersecurity. So it's hard to say they're different, yet there's some similarities and crossover just simply because of the role security itself plays across the whole um, IT world. I hope that helped. I didn't mean to confuse you more, but um, it's subtle. No, but it's no, thank big you. Big differences. That's that's why we're here to tease apart all these these intricacies. Speaking of which, uh, we have a question from a viewer, um, and I think Anna, I think we'll we'll come to you with this one too. The question is: Is the Cyber Ops Associate certification a requirement for the professional certification? And so we can talk a little bit again about prerequisites, but we can maybe also talk about like where should you be to to take the associate exam versus the professional? Like how do you know sure. it, which one you should take? And I'm not sure if we have the opportunity to bring back up, I think it was slide four that dives a little bit deeper um, into the, the, the track, the cyber operations track. Okay, so it starts out with the CCNA that we're talking about today. Perfect. You'll see on the left hand here, it's a single exam talking about the fundamentals of cybersecurity operations. It's really targeting that junior level, entry level SOC analyst is that role that this is that this is targeting. Then that individual or different individuals can move into the cyber ops professional. The cyber ops associate is not a prerequisite. Across all of our portfolio, we have eliminated all prerequisites. So if you choose to, if you're in cyber operations and you're at the professional level and you've looked at our blueprints and you think you meet those qualifications, those you have that skill set, jump right in at the professional level. You earn your cyber ops professional with two exams. The first one is the core, the cyber ops core. That exam is 350-201. And you can find that blueprint online as well. It's a very robust exam. It covers all of the knowledge needed for anyone at the professional level in the cyber operations space. In addition to that exam, you will choose one concentration. And this is similar for all of our professional levels, whether it's network engineer CCMP or software professionals at the DevNet professional level or cyber ops professionals. You take one core, and then you choose one concentration. We're going to start out with two options for concentrations. The first one is forensic analysis and incident response. DFIR is what that exam is going to be called. And then the second concentration that you can choose from is threat hunting. 
Okay. Then soon thereafter, there will be a third and possibly four or five um, concentrations as we grow our portfolio. But again, no prerequisites that you have to take to move into that space at that level. And then moving forward, we will have in the future a cyber ops expert, and that will be lab-based, very similar to what you're seeing today in the CCIE labs. Um, Great. Um, here's another question. Uh, I think it might be a simple question, but we'll go to Cindy, and if Anna wants to comment on it, we can follow up. The question is, is the CyberOps Associate vendor neutral and generic, or does it focus on Cisco technologies and solutions? Cindy? You're, you're on mute still. Sorry about the the, the uh, cyber ops uh, associate is generic more so. Uh, there might be some references to certain technologies, but generally speaking, it is generic. Sounds good. Pretty simple. Okay. Next up. Um, so we have a we have a viewer who uh, passed the. Tech FND exam uh, um, and is wondering what the recommendation is to take SEC Ops or CV Ops. Anna, would you like this one? Sure, I'd be happy to take this one. Okay, so SEC Ops is no longer an exam that's available. So um, the only option that's available right now is this 200 201 Cyber Ops. Associate exam. So this has replaced the SEC fund and SEC ops that together gave you your CCNA cyber. Um, they were combined into a single exam. A few things were changed and modified to make sure it was relevant and um, in line with current practice. Um, but it is now a single exam and that is the only exam available in the marketplace. So that actually brings us to a, a similar question. One viewer is wondering how CyberOps Associate compares with other security certifications in the marketplace, um, like CompTIA, SEC Plus, CH, and so forth. Um, and with this one, let's start with Anna, and then if David or Cindy want to chime in, feel free. Sure, and Joanna, I'm gonna admit that um, I can't make a lot of comparisons um, between the two because I would need to sort of put them side by side and dive a little bit deeper into, um, into where the, the, the similarities and differences are. Um, for any certification, there are blueprints out there, whether it's Cisco certifications or anyone else's, they're all founded on a blueprint. So pull down those blueprints and put them side by side and those differences and similarities should become very apparent. And I would also say there are uh, reasons that you might want one certification over another based on what your career track is and also what your current roles are. So looking at it from a very practical perspective, you have to look at what's going to actually benefit you the most and uh, enable you to make the career progression that you need. Um, where is that greater footprint? Uh, where is it rec recognized the most? and uh, how can that carry you forward? So, uh, of course, from my perspective, that's gonna be those Cisco Cyber Ops certifications. So. Yeah, I, I would just add, I just uh, ditto to everything that was just said. I think it depends on what you're familiar with, what, to, what company I would recommend Cisco, obviously, but it's a comparison and contrast. Look at the blueprints. They're available for all of those certifications that you just mentioned. Once again, blueprints. So two takeaways yep. so far, blueprints and it depends, right? And exactly. we have time for just a few more questions. Um, so here, this one's kind of interesting. And uh, Cindy, I think maybe let's, let's start with you on this one. This viewer has a new master's degree in information security. Should they start at the associate level on their certification path? What do you think? Well, it depends on their their knowledge, right? So if you're looking at 
um, you know, you have this degree. Sometimes the degree is it's certainly great and it's certainly something you need, but having the certification can switch over to more of a practical situation for you when you're taking an exam. So I think it validates what you know. Um, so that is a good takeaway. Uh, I would start if that's where you want to go, if you want to be in cyber operations and you want to enter in via the SOC, this would definitely be a way for you to establish that it's not just a theory, but it's actually applied. And so, um, you know, that's always the case with certifications, right? They're, they're really just proving that you can apply it. So. Yeah, the practical application for sure. Mm -hmm. Here is a question kind of about the mechanics of the exam. Uh, maybe Anna, let's start with you. The viewer is wondering if um, the CyberOps Associate exam contains any practical simulator types of questions with hands-on troubleshooting or configuration. So right now, the um, CyberOps exam is 100 questions and all of those questions are multiple choice or drag and drop um, in some fashion. So there will be some virtual opportunities to come in that exam. Um, we're not doing the simulations anymore where we're simulating an environment and sort of giving you just a, a set capability to an environment. We're actually spinning up virtual machines in the background for our certifications now. So um, we have not introduced any of those into the CyberOps Associate, but they will be coming. So if you hate those, Quick, take your exam now. If you love those, <laughs> wait a little while and you'll see them in there. Okay, great. So right, so right now, all the all the questions are multiple choice or drag and drop. Is that, yes. Did I say that right? Okay. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so we are almost at the bottom of the hour, which is all the time we have for today. So um, one thing before we wrap up, well, the We'll let everyone say a few closing words, but before we do that, I wondered, Cindy, if you could share um, a little bit with us about some of the rewarding aspects of working in the field that you work in. And so we'll start with you and then maybe we'll go from you to Anna and then close with David. Well, I, I think the most important thing for me is I get to make a difference every single day. Um, that's what drives me. And uh, what drives many cybersecurity folks that I work with is fixing something that's working, enabling situations, disabling situations, uh, making so things work um, and things are secure. So um, whatever that happens to be that I'm working on or whichever customer I'm working with, uh, what I care about is that they have a stronger security posture, but in when I work with them or when each of the teammates I work with, um, making that difference, fixing that problem and solving the, the, the situation at hand is critical. Thank you. And I'd just like to say that, you know, if you look back over the last 50 years and you see the role that IT has, the impact that IT has had in every organization and every company across the globe, the, the power of the network and harnessing that power to protect and exchange data. And that is what um, we have seen in our lifetime happen. And we have seen all the changes and we have seen all of the um, beginnings of different careers within IT. And we are at a wonderful spot right now at the beginning of this new career within IT that's solely focused on cybersecurity and helping organizations protect against and prepare for cyber attacks. So there is no better time than this to jump in. And um, I know that might sound trite and a little insincere to say, but but for cybersecurity, it is so true right now. Um, it is a growing field and will continue to grow exponentially in the years to come. So um, this is a great time to jump in. And I encourage everyone watching this to jump in no matter where you are, if you're in IT or you're not in IT. Having some security, cybersecurity skills is going to be essential and make you an asset wherever you are. Yeah, I would just add to what Anna said. The, the great thing about this program is there's a lot of resources right now that are for free. 
Um, some of these courses can be really expensive, but you can go to Cisco Learning Network. You can download blueprints. I mentioned the, the cyber ops prep that we have. I can't think of the URL off the top of my head, but I'm sure that we'll share it. This is a great time to get involved in cyber ops. And there's a lot of free resources to get started. A lot of people think these classes are gonna kill me. They're gonna cost a lot of money. They don't have to at first. You can do a lot of prep work up front for really no cost at all. And we encourage everybody to get involved. And again, you can find a lot of that on Cisco Learning Network, but also with the prep group. I think it starts on October 5th. These are great ways to get involved with cyber ops. It's, it's really an exciting field up and coming. It's really one of the most popular tracks we have. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you, Anna. Thank you, Cindy. And thank you to everyone for, for your questions and your participation today. That wraps up this week's episode, but stay tuned to this same Cisco channel for episode two next week. Thank you.